and welcome to another vlog from Argentina. I will link the last Argentina vlog from a year ago above now for you to see. It was actually my most watched vlog to date, so I'm very happy to be back and I hope that you guys are equally as interested in other parts of Argentina because today I have come to Mendoza. Mendoza is known as a very famous wine region in Argentina. It's also known as the home of the second tallest mountain in the world and the tallest mountain of this hemisphere. So that is exactly where I'm starting my tour today. I'm going to show you this gorgeous landscape that I cannot believe I haven't seen up until today. I've been absolutely blown away by the drive here, so I'm going to show you some videos from that right now. I think I wasted about an hour of my uh, camera battery just filming the mountains all around me because they're so grand, so wonderful, so imposing, so diverse. But not only that, I have also come to one of the main sites here on the Aconcagua mountain, which is this natural bridge where Charles Darwin actually took notes and made some sketches in 1835. This natural arch formed as a result of glaciers expanding and then debris being left over and then the minerals and the water creating an arch and leaving behind uh, some chemicals that you now see as these bright oranges and yellows under me. So they've got a lot of little stalls with artisanal crafts and I bought something for my tennis teacher who might or might not watch this vlog before I get home but we always have a joke that as soon as November hits he always has to wear a hat with a pom-pom and the more ridiculous the better. On the drive back, we've decided to do a little loop hike on the mountain. We are at about 3,000 meters elevation right now, so my cameraman has even said that he can um, feel the shortness of breath coming on. I am okay so far, but I think the more that I walk uphill, which this hike pretty much is, the more I'll start feeling the same thing. One of the things that's uh, been slightly complicated here is just getting the entrance passes for this hike, and that's something I feel that I should talk to you guys about in case you come here and in case you're as spontaneous as we were and just decide to do the hike without booking it ahead of time. To get the tickets, you have two buildings and you have to scan a QR code on one of the buildings, use the Wi-Fi in the other building, fill out about eight pages of information, and then if you pay by credit card, you have to go back to the other building, show them that you filled it all out because otherwise it doesn't work. Oh, and there's also a difference between if you are local and if you're a foreign, which is uh, the case most of the time here in Argentina. There are different rates for locals and foreigners. So that whole process takes you about 15 minutes and a lot of complex back and forth ongoings between two buildings, one with Wi-Fi but without a card machine and one without Wi-Fi but with a card machine, if that makes sense. Anyway, my advice is just buy the tickets ahead of time. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble and you'll be able to just drive in with your ticket and enjoy this beautiful hike and scenery. I know I don't think the feeling of being here translates on camera, but you feel so small and insignificant and you're almost belittled by this gorgeous landscape that you see no matter where you look and it all just comes together to create this visual poetry in the mountains, if you will. I know that sounds rather poetic, but when you are here, when you get this feeling of the grandeur around you, that's honestly what you take away from it. This is so cool. <laughs> My friend Andrea, who I went to Corsica with, would go absolutely bananas here. Look at all of them. Well, we're driving back from the mountain now, and all I can say is that I was expecting it to be beautiful, but not quite like that. I do recommend spending a whole day there if you can. Now it's about 4.30, 5 p.m. ish. It's still incredibly hot. Uh, that's one thing that's so beautiful about this time of year. You're always almost guaranteed to get good weather here in Mendoza. We're driving through the central area now, and we're on our way to the hotel, which has been absolutely stunning to stay at really really well designed. I've done a lot of research when it comes to hotels 
hotels here. So I picked this one very carefully and I can't wait to show you guys. So if you follow me, you'll be able to see our room. Let's come over here. You've got a beautiful outdoor area, but also you have a view onto all of the vineyards as well as the mountains. I actually don't know how much of my time I'd like to dedicate to exploring the area and how much of my time I'd like to dedicate to just sitting. I feel this right here, what I'm seeing in front of me, kind of defines the area of Mendoza. Let's go look at the inside. Look at that. So you wake up and once again you're greeted with this incredible view. You've got another seating area, free wine, obviously, loving this wall. Nice little design element, pop of color. And hold on. For me, bathrooms are really important in hotels, and this is something that my friends and I were discussing the other day. And this bathroom is really great because it's got so much natural light in, and it's just very open. Driving to dinner now, it's about 7.30 p.m. and the temperature is still... 37 degrees so yeah as you can probably tell the sun is still very much uh, up there and shining and strong so that's one thing that I'm definitely enjoying about Mendoza it's a lot warmer than Buenos Aires which is where I came from now the place that we're going to for dinner is called Casa Vigil Vigil am I pronouncing that right? Vigil Vigil see it's good to have a local with me Casa Vigil and the reason that it's famous is because they produce their own wine so they're a winery they have their own vineyards and they have a top rated restaurant as well where they do wine pairings with the meals you can have anything from a la carte to three courses to seven courses and it's all very very good food apparently and the prices are not astronomically ridiculously crazy well looks like we got here just on time for a little tour of the winery I am actually very happy that that's the case because I don't know very much about wines, but I've learned some interesting things along the way, including the barreling process. So this is, oh, it's warm. This is full of wine, which has been in there for 18 months, and the different ways to barrel. Something can be in smaller barrels, which gives it a more woody taste, or in bigger ones like this, which according to them gives it a more earthy and authentic taste. And then if we come over here, this is the fermentation process for red wines, which have to be fermented at around 25 to 28 degrees Celsius. And then for white wines, the fermentation process takes place at around 15 to 18 degrees. Now, the other thing that I'm about to show you, which is really cool, is a big hole in the middle of these uh, vineyards. And the hole was dug out for them just to see uh, what the different uh, soil composition and the different rock compositions were. These details matter so much because it affects how the roots grow, it affects how the water is absorbed, and it affects obviously the quality of the wine that you're gonna get after. We are in the cave where they keep all their barrels of their local produce as well as artworks that are for sale. And here he was explaining that you'll find another one of those famous holes that was dug just for the purpose of determining the quality of the rocks and the quality of the soil.
last course, seven out of seven. As you can see, we have gone for the big menu of seven courses. It's all been amazing, a little bit too long. The whole experience took about three hours, but if you're one of those people who really likes to savor everything, try lots of wines in between, then you are definitely in the right place here. Good morning! I got up early today just so that I could do a little tour of a olive oil and balsamic oil production facility. I've always been interested in olive oils much more than wines, so I feel what I'm about to learn here is going to be very, very exciting and quite a journey into new knowledge and new tastes. The family production that essentially started this about 120 years ago is called the Lauer family and even though they sold it in the year 2000 and has had many owners since the olive oil quality has never gone down and it is considered some of the best in the area if not in the world the tour here can be done in either English or Spanish and they take you through the old processes of how the olive oil was essentially made this was about a hundred years ago and all these machines uh, would take three days to uh, actually make the olive oil that would then get sold and now the process is so seamless and so much more industrial and yet achieves the same quality that they only take a few hours instead of two to three days they like to pick their olives in the spring season and then they will put them through different processes to separate uh, the oil from the water and they make over 6,000 tons of olive oil every year which is absolute madness given the fact that they only pick the olives for about two months a year you also get to see their balsamic oil production and balsamic Balsamic oil is something that I always enjoy putting on my food, putting on my salads and it's something that was actually um, first used as a form of fertility medicine in Italy about a thousand years ago which I didn't know until today. The way that they make their balsamic oil is they get uh, green grapes and they separate the different ingredients of the grapes in different barrels then about a year later they'll combine them, it all gets fermented, it gets heated, the color of it changes, it becomes much darker and then it is ready to get bottled and sold. Really, really interesting tour. I have to say that this is a highly recommended activity in Mendoza. You get to learn a lot, but also there is a little surprise after the tour ends. The great thing about these tours is that you get a tasting after. So the first tasting is these sauces that they create. One is a tomato paste, one is an olive paste, and then there is another one that I don't quite understand. But my first try is going to be the tomato paste. That's the best tomato paste I've ever had. You know I'm used to those um, canned tomato sauces that I use in pasta, but this is a whole new level. Take a look. That olive oil is the first one I'm gonna try. It is rated number one, so I have very high expectations. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to take that home. It's amazing. And that one is really smooth. They've got others that are a bit more harsh and scratchy, if you will, but that one is incredibly smooth. I love it. I'm gonna take a picture because I can't take this home, but this is amazing. All right, the texture of this one feels a little bit more thick. Even though it's thicker, you need more of that one to get a similar taste to the first one that I tried. I think now is the time for me to try some of their balsamic oils. It's really good. The amazing thing about balsamic oils, vinegars, creams, is that they're so versatile. They can be used on any dish, on any salad, any starter. It always gives it a nice acidic and yet sweet flavor. All right, back at the hotel and ready to pack my suitcase and head back to Buenos Aires, unfortunately. If it were up to me, I would obviously spend another day here. So for next time, I think spending two full days here plus an extra half day is the ideal time for Mendoza. I think the thing that surprised me the most about this place was number one, just like the rest of Argentina, everything is very, very affordable. So for example, I just went to the pharmacy and I bought three things, which were uh, a box of 12 packs of tissues, uh, some tablets and a chapstick. And all of that cost me $3. 
Obviously, it is because of inflation and it is because of the current conversion rate, but nevertheless, it does give you this opportunity to live like a king basically here for a very, very affordable amount of money. The second thing that surprised me about Mendoza is the fact that it has a lot of um, oil and gas production, which is really, really weird because when I heard about Mendoza, I obviously expected it to be just wineries and just this kind of scenery, but I filmed a little bit of what I mean for you guys. It's basically um, oil and gas refineries because the soil here is so rich with oil and gas that uh, they crowd up a lot of the central areas, funnily enough. And number three is obviously the mountains. Uh, as I said before, Mendoza is mostly known for its wine and wineries and uh, wine production but people rarely associate it to some of the world's most beautiful and spectacular mountains and that's exactly what i've experienced this time around i'm not much of a wine person so for me hiking and exploring nature is a lot closer and uh, just more of the activities that i would personally choose so yeah, that was my time in Mendoza. Obviously there's a lot more to do and this was just my experience and not what I would recommend for every single person that comes here, but I hope this gives you guys a good idea if you're ever here for a day and just wanna get the most out of this fantastic part of Argentina. I hope you like this vlog. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time and keep smiling. best part of my seven course dinner by far.